low testosterone, also known as a male hormone, is a common issue that affects a lot of men, especially from the age of 40 to 45 and beyond. But the big questions are, what are the actual symptoms of low testosterone? If my levels are low, do I really need medication? Or are there natural ways to boost it? What blood tests should I do to check my testosterone levels accurately? Can those results tell me if the problem is coming from the testicles or from the brain, specifically the pituitary gland? And are there natural supplements that can really help support healthy testosterone levels? This is a super important topic, especially for men over 40. In today's episode, we're breaking it all down step by step. So stick around. Peace be upon you. I'm Hussein Latfi, and you're watching the Octopus Pharmacist channel in a new episode of From A to Z. Welcome. Let's start with the main titles of today's episode. If you're looking for a specific part of the topic, feel free to jump to the section that matches your interest. But if you want to understand everything about low testosterone levels in men as they age, stay with me from the first minute to the last. As always, let's take it one step at a time. We'll begin with an overview, some key points and essential facts about testosterone. First point, common misunderstandings about testosterone. When people hear the words testosterone or male hormone, their minds often go straight to topics like obesity or sexual performance. But in reality, testosterone is a critical hormone for both men and women, far beyond just those subjects. Second point, how testosterone is made. Testosterone is made in the body from cholesterol. Now, here's something interesting. Many people think that being overweight means more body fat, more cholesterol, and therefore more testosterone. But actually, the opposite is true. Why? Two important reasons. One, hormone regulation in the brain. The brain controls testosterone production by releasing a hormone called gonadotropin-releasing hormone, GnRH. This triggers a chain reaction that leads to testosterone production. Two, fat cells and estrogen conversion. Fat cells contain an enzyme called aromatase. This enzyme converts testosterone into estrogen. So, people with excess fat often end up with lower testosterone and may experience symptoms like reduced sexual health and fertility. So no, it's not true that more fat equals more testosterone. In fact, it's often the opposite. Third point, where testosterone comes from. Let's look at where testosterone is produced in both males and females. In men, the main source is the testicles. Here's how the process works. The brain releases GnRH, which travels to the pituitary gland. This gland releases two key hormones, LH and FSH. The one we care most about here is LH. It goes to the testicles and stimulates them to produce testosterone. In women, it works similarly. GnRH triggers the pituitary to release LH and FSH. LH goes to the ovaries, where a smaller amount of testosterone is produced. There's also another source, the adrenal glands. They produce a hormone called DHEA, which can be converted into testosterone in men and estrogen in women. When testosterone levels in the blood reach the normal range, the brain slows down the release of GnRH, a smart feedback system to keep everything balanced. Fourth point, testosterone in men and women. What's the difference? Testosterone exists in both men and women, but in very different amounts. It's known as an anabolic androgenic steroid. Anabolic means it helps build muscle. Androgenic means it gives male physical traits. Steroid refers to its chemical structure. So what does testosterone do in men? One, it supports the growth and development of male sexual organs. That's why low testosterone can lead to a condition called hypogonadism, which involves underdeveloped or shrinking reproductive organs. Two, it gives a man his physical male features, deep voice, facial hair, and body hair. But keep in mind, high testosterone may increase facial slash body hair, but it often causes hair loss on the head. Three, it increases muscle mass. Men have more muscle growth than women because of this. Four, it's essential for strong bones, helping with bone length, density, and strength. Five, 
It plays a major role in sexual desire, sperm production, and movement. Six, it boosts red blood cell production, which is important for energy and health. What about women? Yes, women also need testosterone, but in much smaller amounts. When testosterone levels are within normal limits, it helps. One, support sexual desire and function. Two, improve egg quality and activity. Three, strengthen bones and maintain bone density. Four, improve mood and reduce anxiety and stress. Five, support mental clarity and brain function. But if testosterone levels rise too high in women, masculine features can appear, like excess facial hair or voice deepening. Final point, the takeaway. So in summary, testosterone is extremely important for both men and women. But like everything in the body, balance is key. Whether it's too low or too high, an imbalance in testosterone can cause real health problems. The second point is, if there is a decrease or increase in blood hormones, what are the symptoms? Let's begin with the first case, which is a decrease in male hormone levels in men. It's important to note that testosterone levels naturally decrease by 1-2% to 2 every year. This happens because as we age, the liver begins to release a hormone in higher concentrations called SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin. What's the issue with SHBG? This hormone binds the testosterone in the blood. As a result, free testosterone, the active form, decreases. So, what are the symptoms of low testosterone in men? One, the most important and first symptom is chronic fatigue and exhaustion. Two, the second is a reduction in muscle size and strength. Three, the third is a significant drop in energy and sexual desire. Four, the next is shrinkage and weakness in the genital organs. Five, then comes enlargement of breast tissue in men, known as gynecomastia. Six, testosterone reduction may also result in increased estrogen levels, leading to symptoms like hot flashes, similar to those women experience at the start of menopause. Seven, other symptoms include depression, genital weakness, and extreme bone fragility, where even minor accidents can cause fractures. Therefore, any man over the age of 45 experiencing one or more of these symptoms should suspect a testosterone deficiency and consult a doctor to undergo the necessary tests, which we'll discuss later. What about women? Low testosterone in women typically leads to three main symptoms. One, low libido or sexual desire. Two, bone health issues. Three, depression. Now, let's move to the second half of the symptoms, where testosterone levels increase. You might think, great, more male hormones must be a good thing. But I'm here to tell you it's not. Everything in the body needs balance. Let's understand the symptoms of increased testosterone in both men and women. In men, symptoms of high testosterone. One, shrinkage of the genital organs. You might ask, how? Isn't testosterone important for size? Yes, it is when it's within a normal range. But when it's elevated due to external intake, like what some bodybuilders or athletes use, it leads to suppression of natural hormone production, eventually shrinking the testicles. Two, heart rhythm issues and heart muscle hypertrophy. High testosterone can harm the heart by disrupting its rhythm and causing enlargement of the heart muscle, making the hormone dangerous for cardiovascular health. Three, prostate enlargement, known as BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. This happens because testosterone increases muscle mass, including the prostate, which can compress the urethra and cause urination issues. In some cases, this may require surgical intervention. Four, other side effects include A, liver problems, B, skin acne, C, fluid retention, D, high blood pressure, E, headaches, F, anxiety, G, sleep disturbances, H, severe mood swings, I, increased aggression and criminal behavior. That's why, in some European and American countries, when a person exhibits repeated violent behavior or criminal aggression, they undergo chemical castration, a treatment to suppress testosterone levels, also called criminal custody. In women, symptoms of high testosterone. 
One, the most well-known condition is uterine thickening or endometrial hyperplasia. While normal levels of testosterone are important for the uterus, excessive levels lead to complications, disrupting the menstrual cycle and delaying pregnancy. Two, another common issue is hirsutism, excessive male pattern hair growth. Women may develop A, facial hair, B, increased muscle mass, C, a deeper voice, 3. Additional symptoms include A. Skin acne B. Hair thinning or baldness C. Rough skin texture D. Weight gain, often due to uterine thickening E. Depression F. Shrinkage in uterine size, opposite to what happens in men These symptoms can overlap with other conditions, which is why a doctor's diagnosis is essential to confirm the cause, whether in men or women. Third and final point. What does the doctor do? After reviewing the patient's symptoms and medical history, the doctor will conduct tests to determine whether testosterone is too high or too low. Causes of low testosterone in men. A. Injury or trauma that damages testicular tissue. B. Surgery affecting the testes or surrounding nerves. C. Radiation exposure, which destroys testicular tissue. D. Chemotherapy. E. Use of medications at lower testosterone production or concentration. F. Brain-related issues that disrupt hormonal signals from the brain. In summary, low testosterone can be due to one of two conditions. 1. Primary hypogonadism. The problem is in the testes, while the brain functions normally and sends proper signals. 2. Secondary hypogonadism. The problem originates in the brain and the testes are healthy but receive no signal to produce testosterone, what are the required hormonal tests? 1. Total testosterone. O. Best done in the morning for the most accurate results. O. This test includes A. Free testosterone. B. Bound testosterone. C. Testosterone bound SHBG. O. Normal ranges. A. Men. 300 to 1,000 ing slash DL. B. Women. 15 to 70 ing slash DL. 2. Free testosterone active form. A. Men. 5 to 21 ing slash DL. B. Women. 1 to 6.4 ing slash DL. 3. SHBG. Sex hormone binding globulin. A. Produced by the liver and binds to testosterone. B. The higher the SHBG, the lower the free testosterone, and therefore the weaker the hormones affect. C. Normal ranges. A. Men. 10 to 57 mole slash L. B. Women. 18 to 144 mole slash L. 4. Pituitary hormones. FSH and LH. A. FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. E. Men. Udamaj del dodz quatra uela. B. LH luteinizing hormone. E. Man un buita buit sisi uela. C. Women. Levels vary based on a menstrual cycle. Sometimes FSH is high and LH is low, or vice versa. So, how do we interpret these values? These tests help us know whether the problem is primary or secondary. If testosterone is low and FSH and LH are high, it means the brain is working, and the issue is in the testes' primary hypogonadism. If testosterone is low, and FSH and LH are also low, it means the brain is not sending the signal secondary hypogonadism. Section 4. How naturally maintain testosterone levels after age 45. Now we reach the fourth and final topic, one that's extremely important for all of us. How can we naturally maintain testosterone levels after the age of 45? There are four key steps you need to focus on. One, exercise, especially resistance training. A lot of people say that once a man is 45, he suddenly becomes passionate about fitness. He joins a gym, starts lifting weights, and works on his physique. And you know what? That's not a bad thing. Exercise at this age is critical. Why? Because when you reduce body fat and build muscle mass, you signal your body to lower aromatase enzyme levels. And what does that enzyme do? It converts testosterone into estrogen. 
So when aromatase goes down, testosterone stays higher. The best type of exercise after 40? Resistance training. I'll leave some helpful videos in the description so you can follow a workout routine that fits your age and goals. Two nutrition and supplements, backed by blood tests. Healthy food is essential, but sometimes supplements can make a big difference if used correctly and based on lab results. Here are the most important nutrients and their recommended daily amounts. 1. Vitamin A, 700 to 900 mg slash day. 2. Zinc, preferably a zinc gluconate 10 to 11 mg slash day. 3. Vitamin D, aim for blood levels between 50 to 70 nanograms per milliliter. To reach this, you might take 50,000 IU once a week for two to three months, then retest. Maintenance, 1,000 to 2,000 IU daily. Four, magnesium, 100 to 400 mg slash day, best taken at night. Five, boron, 1 to 1.5 mg slash day. Six, calcium, 1,000 to 1,500 mg slash day. Seven, L-arginine, 3.5 to 9 grams slash day. Important, always do blood work before taking supplements. Adjust your intake according to the results and stick to recommended daily allowances, RDAs. Three, prioritize quality sleep. Sleep isn't just for rest. It plays a huge role in hormone production. You need six to eight hours of deep, uninterrupted sleep every night. Why? Because during REM sleep, the stage when you dream, your body produces testosterone at a higher rate. So, no staying up until sunrise. Sleep at night to support your hormones. Four, eat smart. Avoid testosterone killers. Choose testosterone boosters. Let's start with the foods you should avoid as they reduce testosterone. One, mint. Two, licorice. Three, soy-based products contain phytoestrogens. Four, fast food full of preservatives and trans fats. Five, alcohol. Six, smoking. Now here are foods and natural extracts that help boost testosterone. One, garlic. Great for testosterone if you're not sensitive to it. Two, pine bark extract. Also lowers bad cholesterol and improves blood flow. Three, chrysin. Found in high quality raw honey. A spoonful in the morning can help. Four, Palmetto saw Palmetto. We covered it in a previous episode. Link in description. Five, ginseng. We'll dedicate a full episode to it soon. Always research any herb before using it. What does it do? Are there side effects or drug interactions? Is it safe during pregnancy or breastfeeding? How do you choose a good quality product with the right concentration? That's all for today's episode. In future videos, we'll keep diving into herbs and supplements one by one, so you can make informed, healthy choices. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with someone who needs it. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so via Patreon, PayPal, or directly through YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Hussein Latfi.